Very bad, guys. Bomb host on HBCU game day. Uh, guys, uh, second year being in this position, just talk about your thoughts on the game and your thoughts on the Celebration Bowl and uh, play with me at. Well, how y'all doing? First, um, the game, it was real, I say intense. Like I said earlier, there's a well coached team. I said the other day, it was a well coached team. They did their job by the opposing team. And uh, we just didn't find a way to win. Celebration Bowl, it's a great experience. Proud to be a part of it. And, uh, yeah. I mean, defense, we did what we could. I mean, we knew we were short. We knew a lot of people left. We knew key players had left, but we still made sure we did what we could. So, I mean, it was a pleasure playing in it. And, uh, you know, history is history. Back. Emmanuel Glades of Crush Sports Talk. Shadur, take us through that last drive in overtime and uh, the last two plays. What were, what were being called and what were your thoughts on them? I honestly don't even remember. I only remember the last play, honestly. Um, clock just got real low. He wasn't able to um, get the back out, uh, motion him all the way out. What they would have got confused and. Responsibilities and the coverage, and personally, I feel like I should have just took the took the penalty. They had a chance to get the right play, exactly how we want instead of rushing things. So, for me, it's just a learning experience and just weighing the um, pros and cons before the play. Second row, to right. Open mic broadcast, Joshua Davis, uh, Ira Miller. Use your mic, Mr. Davis. Okay. Ira Miller, why are your defense struggling so in the run? Run defense has such a problem. I mean, guys just didn't do their job. And uh, the guys that were supposed to have their back wasn't there. So, I mean, like I said, we had a few guys that were supposed to be here that left. And you know, we kind of paid for it. But we still tried what we could. We still tried to, you know, maximize the opportunity that we had. And they did everything that we thought they was going to do, but we just didn't mass our job. So that's what it looks like when you're on your job. Shador, uh, Langston Newsom, Clarion Ledger. Can you walk me through that final play in regulation with that touchdown pass to Travis Hunter? And, and what can you talk about a freshman stepping up in such a big way in the third and fourth quarter of this game? He's been doing it all season. We just had to find the right time to put him on the field. When he's on defense and he's dominating, um, yeah, I think we got a lot of receivers, Blair Nation too. It's a lot of them. So it's not just Travis this season. I'll say overall, he was, he was in when he could in certain positions. Um, last play, a lot of chaos going on. So I'm like, Travis is Travis Hunter. He's hit for a reason. Then they're going to play off man, off cover two man. So a lot, of, I already, in my head, I already took away the concepts to the field and the slot. It wasn't going to be there. So I'm like, make him earn, make him earn. And that's what he did. When I threw the ball, I'm, all I got to do is put air on it. He's going to do the rest. So it wasn't really hard. I just threw a fade. He, made, he, he did all the work. Kenyatta Cabell, Dr. Cabell's inside the HBCU Sports Lab. I hear your door. This is for you. Going through that process for a lot of folks, just looking at how you know much time is left on the clock and just all the different factors going into it. As a quarterback and the leader, one of the leaders, if not the leader of the team, uh, what over the years allows you to slow down and process everything and to make big time plays like you did? Um, 
even though it didn't work out to the full scope of the end of the game. But just go through the progressions. There's nothing. There's no different recipe than when when there's uh, 15 minutes on the clock and there's like two minutes. There's no difference. You're going through your reads. You're, you're, I would say, in the situations, knowing what you got to get, knowing what's needed, I would say. Um, that's it. Me personally, I was just reminding myself, hey, you're in this you're in this spot for a reason. You wouldn't want nobody else in this position. I know I could do it. Team knew we could do it. The whole line knew we could do it. It was just everybody didn't believe in me. So that's why after whenever we scored, I'm not celebrating on nothing, because that means everybody said, you ain't believe. I believe we was gonna go down there and drive down and score. It wasn't nothing to get excited about. So, more of the story I'll say, it's just rationalizing what you should do in a situation. A lot of thinking, I would say. Two more, starting here, starting on the left. Ernest Rex, MTMP Sports. Um, Shador, probably if you could, can you um, summarize your time at Jackson State? been a blast for me. Um, if it wasn't for these group of guys that I'm here with, nothing that has happened would have happened. You know, I decided to come back for another year to experience this time, and unfortunately we came up short, but everything else just came with it. Like I said, you had a, a great offense that carried us today, and they've been dominant all season. You know, you got a defense who showed out, and just we just came up short. You know, I, some of my piece to the puzzle wasn't just there, but uh, I mean, after that, man, I mean, everything happens for a reason. So it's a it's a life lesson. You know, you can never grow if you don't have lessons in life. And, you know, I'm appreciative of it, but this whole time has been a a, a blessing. You know, I got to play with Shador Sanders. Not everybody get to do that. You know, and I'm appreciative of that. You know, he's younger than me. It's still a a great experience that I got to experience. Travis Hunter. You know, my D line, my safeties. You know what I'm saying? The, the linebackers right next to me, the old line I got to play with all these type of guys, man. And all these guys going to go somewhere. They're going to make a lot of money. So, you know, I had a great experience, man. I would never ask for nothing else. If I could do it again, I'd do it all over again. I promise you that. But I'm a priest of it. Being at Jackson State, I would say it's, it's eye-opening. A lot of people don't know about HBCUs. Personally, I didn't know about many HBCUs. Uh, when I was going through my recruitment process. So I would say over over the two years I've been here, two and a half years I've been here, um, a spotlight here, everything's here. Um, it's some things that's not up to par, but it's good and bad with everything. So the people, the fans, everything about the city of Jackson I love. Okay. People say it's a lot of crime in the city, but we haven't ran into it. We got our head on straight, we're going to school, doing what we gotta do. So just being in love with the city, the people, um, just how kind they are, just the whole HBCU family, talking to them in the airport, playing around with them. It's, it's nothing I ever, ever been around before. I went to a private school in high school, so being around a lot of people of our own color and our own type right. is um uh, is truly fun. Thanks. Last question. Donnell Salt, the Atlanta Boys. Just want to ask both players, uh, what does it mean to have a record-setting attendance for the celebration? But what does that say about the impact of HBCU football? We were then. <laughs> One time, my bad. Can you read? Can you give them back the mic? I just, you know Sorry. I asked y'all that it was a record setting attendance tonight for the game. What does that say about HBC, HBCU football and the impact? Oh. I mean, how many was it? 49,000. 49,000. 49,000. I'm not going to lie. It's a bit like confetti in the stands. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> what is that? And I'm not talking about after the game. I'm talking before the game. It's a bit like confetti in there. But I'm not going to lie, though. Playing at home. Like versus Alcorn versus one of the rivalry games, there's it's a lot of people in there. So uh, us playing a MIAC opponent, I'm glad a lot, everybody came out to see it. I feel like 
Uh, a lot of people got to see what they wanted to. And of course our fans did it, um, unfortunately. But overall, it just, it's just great that HBCUs is getting this attention, that is getting, having all this media in here. Um, and that everybody's able to see it. You got YouTubers, you got everybody, kids looking up to on the sideline during the game, sharing that on their channel, sharing that everywhere. So HBCUs definitely have a lot of attention, a lot of media to it. I would say now than it has before. So everybody's going to grow up and hear about HBCUs and understand what HBCUs is. So I would say it's great. And I love the fact that everybody came out and was able to see it. I mean, I knew our fans were going to show up. They always show up and they show out. No matter if we down or up, they always going to show out. But like I said, unfortunately, we didn't give them what they wanted. But like I said, everything happens for a reason. Everything's a learning experience. I always say walk by faith and not by sight. So a lot of people that sit here with their heads down and things of that nature, every, some good is going to happen. Some good is coming. Like I said, Jack State to, to, to the fan base, I love all you guys. I mean, I'm a priest of all y'all. Without y'all, this would would, probably would never happen. Y'all stick through the same things we went through. No water, no no electricity, things of that nature, man. We still overcame. We know? just we just put a spotlight on it. Facts. And it's going to always go down in history. And Somebody, we, yeah. And we was able to play for the city. You got to understand, the city doesn't have any um, national teams. It only has college. So, I mean, it's just giving hope to the city for something different. Having something, just being there talking to kids at Blackburn Middle School, mm -hmm. um, elementary school or middle school, either one. Yeah, no. Oh, middle school. Yeah, just them being able to connect with us, them being able just to talk to us and uh, just play with us and stuff like that. It's a lot of it's a lot of bad things in the city. A lot of kids never, when we um, brought some type of food up there, they, a lot of them ain't have it. They never tasted it before. So it was, it was just being in Jackson, I just feel like it's just eye opening for everybody. Kids will have something to look up to. Kids will want to be a, a Jackson State Tiger one day. And last message I want to say is to all you recruits and all you players, come home. You know, if we can do it, y'all can do it. Come on home. Let's represent well. HBCUs need to keep going up, whether you like it or not. Whether they like it or not, we need to keep rising with this. We need to keep going with this. The money needs to come back home. Your talent needs to come back home. We need to play for your people. We need to represent our people. I mean, like I said, if we do it, you can do it. That's all I want to say. Thank y'all. We got them all. Thank you, guys.